some interesting results of work on Termitomyces pellets. So, Termitomyces is a very interesting mutualistic basidiomycetes which is found in tropical countries in Afro Asian region. The work is on three dimensional fungal colonies or pellets. Now, these pellets are industrially very important, but the real problem is there is no such thing as uh, what we can define as ideal pellets or model pellets or perfect pellets. And uh, work done by Green and many others, but specifically Green, uh, he clearly says that tailoring morphology by adjusting process parameters is one side of the coin, but an ideal morphology has not been ever been ever be found. So it's very clear that although attempts have been made for the purpose of developing industrial strains, there has been uh, no attempt to work out what we call as or idea of a model uh, fungal pellet. So description of morphology will therefore have to move from assuming average sizes of IFA aggregates and pellets to reproduce size distribution, meaning uh, we need to go for more homologous, more uniform pellet population because there would be a lot of variables which will be encountered in the process of pelletization. So why we need ideal or perfect pellets in industrial operations? Because after all, when we screen large number of strains, finally the purpose will be their application in some bioprocess. So some possible answers why we need ideal or perfect pellets. Here ideal and perfect has been put in quote marks for the simple reason that nobody has an idea exactly how to define an ideal or perfect pellet. So it has to be taken with a little pinch of salt. So some possible answers are such pellets make bioprocess control operations easier, smoother, precise, predictable and amenable to dynamic modeling with potential for complete automation thus saving costs, time and energy. Basically we visualize that okay we can predict the pellet shape, size, density, population, number and growth rate then it will be possible to automate the whole process so it will remove the need of lot of labor, lot of uh, cost which are involved in monitoring and all those things and everything can be automated. So how do we define then perfect or ideal or model pellets? This question remains still unanswered in sporulating or non-sporulating filamentous fungi. The difference only in sporulating and non-sporulating filamentous fungi is in sporulating fungi the pelletization takes place from a mass of spores. So those colonies are totally different than when we use non-sporulating forms like say basidiomycetes and all if the culture is started from a context tissue culture or any other type of solid media, culture grown on solid media and then used as inoculum then its behavior will be totally different than what you see generally from spores which are used for starting a, a pelletization process. So there are complex pellet morphogenesis factors which are involved and they are yet to be fully understood. Then this is our major story that we are going to tell you today and uh, our postulate for model perfect or ideal pellet or other choice of a strain which is model pellets. There are four points here. First is it could be strain identifiable from a bank of strains means a culture collection where a single species could yield you very interesting different different phenotypes or strains and morphotypes of interest from which you can produce pellets under defined growth conditions then uh, such a strain could be scale independent uh, in terms of morphological stability means you can grow it at half liter scale, 5 liter scale, 50 liter scale, 1000 liter scale, 10,000 liter scale so its morphology will not change irrespective of the volume of operations. Then unit biomass means per biomass per unit weight of the pellet. Then mycelial packing density this is very important because it also gives you idea of you know how efficient is the biomass in its packaging and what is the ratio of solid to the air gaps or the vacuoles which vacuum I mean sorry the voids which will be left in the in the pellet. Then porosity is also it gives you idea of you know the structure of the pellet in terms of air pockets or you know the pockets where CO2 may be, may be getting trapped. So areas where density of mycelia is less. So these are quite expected. Then mechanical strength and shearing forces means stability of the uh, forces because it depend, all depends on the integrity of the hyphae, hyphal walls and lots of other 
factors which decide whether the uh, pellet is fragile or the pellet is uh, really means uh, it can withstand high propeller forces in bioprocess agitational operations. Oxygen and nutrient uptake efficiency is very important, so that would also define our idea of model and perfect and our ideal pellet. And overall, in terms of you know the population of the pellets which are formed in the fermenter, uh, what will be their total biomass? So we sum this up over the number of pellets per unit volume of medium. So it's it gives us an idea of it. So a model perfect or ideal pellet will tell us okay, this is the best pellet with maximum yield, you know, with the, a particular dimension of the pellets, which is a stable morphology. All these parameters can be brought together under point one. In point two, we are actually talking about the certain architectural feature of the pellets in terms of complexity of topography. Now the topography deals with surface as we all know whether it is a solid state or whether it is a pellet surface, it all deals with the surface at which we are looking at different magnification. Visually we can look at a colony and we can decide aerial mycelium, we can decide about uh, features of surface mycelium and we can look down and we can see even the submerged mycelium. But in case of pellets, you know, it is the topmost layer, you know, the what we call in the two dimensional colonies as peripheral growth zone or margin. That is the zone actually which is at the interface of liquid and it is actively involved in oxygen uptake. So, it, it, it could have higher fractal dimension, it could become complex because the fractal dimension tells us something about you know the repetitive you know structures, repetitive forms and uh, its complexity and isotropy tells us about whether the properties of the surface are same in all direction, whether it is regular, irregular, whether it is thin in one area, thicker in one area whether the crisscrossing of mycelia on the surface is uniform or non-uniform, all these tells us in terms of isotropy because that isotropy could be also mathematically expressed. Finally, it will also tell us about larger cellular area because uh, the motives, the motive is a very important idea in you know sort of a patch analysis and in any type of landscape, the motive uh, either open or close tells us something about number of distinct features in the surface like peaks and valleys or uh, troughs, you know, and uh, depressions or, you know, areas of elevation and whether they are closed or they are open with or without boundaries, all these things will form a motif. So, motif is very interesting because the motif will not always be geometric, they would be random also, but the number of motif will also tell us something about the complexity. So, finally, in terms of production of EPS, because if the pellet is producing a lot of extracellular polysaccharide, then Viscosity of the medium will obviously increase and that would deter the oxygen division also across the pellet and then many of these macrofungi produce calcium oxalate because of their uh, uh, you know the organic acid production and uh, the oxalic acid is complex with calcium also and then it, it sediment because calcium oxalate is insoluble in that case the sedimentation level will be increasing in the medium and that would cause problems for uh, pellet uh, dynamics or dynamics finally in terms of product formation efficiency, the product could be any primary or secondary mode of metabolite, it could be organic acid, it could be an enzyme, it could be polysaccharide, whatever it is, but we must know that what is the product efficiency per unit biomass and this is possible, uh, you know, to study and a large number of studies have taken place on basis of product formation efficiency. Then, our next to this one is, we have postulated on basis of the previous slide, I can uh, go into these details, that certain attributes of what is known as a model pellet. First of all, according to us and we are subject to correction on basis of fresh results in future that we are we are having a, some sort of bias here and I admit that we have a bias towards spherical geometry because we know that given all types of geometric shapes, the sphere is you know supposed to be a perfect form of solid. So uh, I would rather opt for a spherical geometry. Then uniform dimension, this is very important because uniform dimensions are very helpful in any types of industrial operations. So we get a homogeneous pellet population, I would call it a model pellet population. Then intermediate size, now the size also important, we can't get uh, pellets uh, egg sized or tennis ball sized or orange sized and all, it's, it's going to be very difficult in process engineering, in, uh, in engineering such type of strain which will produce massive big pellets. But we know generally from literature survey that most of the pellets will be up to 1 to 2 centimeter or uh, ideally 10 to 20 millimeter and that would be a very manageable type of size. But there is no hard and fast rule about pellet size, but it should be within a particular range, neither very small and neither too big. Then without appendages, what I mean by appendages is that uh, we see that many pellets form appendages and then like they entangle and then they get sheared off and also cause uh, increase in viscosity of the medium and give false positives. 
then visually smooth so when we remove the pellets and try to observe them visually then we know that they are they have smooth surface or very finely fibrillous surface so those type of pellets we may perhaps put in the category of model pellet then leg of bias the pellets obviously shouldn't capture a lot of uh, carbon dioxide and float to the top and then uh, you know that we really can't call them a pellets as such but some sort of uh, stationary you know that surface growth and uh, finally no or negligible production of epa or sediment then when we go to the details then we can see that uh, dense mycelial mycelial packaging with high microporosity has revealed under high magnification could be a useful feature to define model pellet because the microporosity is a major of you know the architecture of the pellet in terms of the type of uh, gaps which are left but they should be so small that you, they should be ideally placed inside the entire uh, pellet uh, structure so surface high pay exhibiting higher that in the fractal dimension as it increases we see the complexity of the design increases also or the shape increases also and the isotropy means okay i can say that a pellet surface is 50% isotropic means 50% of the topography is identical in certain directions so i would prefer you know that if the pellet topography reaches above 50 60 70 80 then really i have got a isotropic you know that fungal pellet means when the value value is raised so both combination of fractal dimension and isotropy will give you a very good parameter at the absolute uh, microscopic level and that would be really useful to mark my pellet as a model pellet so going further the work presented here we say that it is a very tiny and humble step in the direction of defining attributes of what could be an ideal or mo model pellet morphology but a lot of uh, more advanced work is required what we are presenting here in front of you is you know a combination of two techniques basically at use of Uh, scanning electron microscopy to bring out certain details and the data which we have captured with scanning electron microscopy we have selected some very interesting clear crisp sharp images which were subjected to the detail uh, mountain uh, top uh, software which is a very powerful state of art software with which we have got data sets which we have further analyzed the data sets on basis of which we will be presenting the details then there are standard techniques for taking the spectral characterization of uh, the pellets dry biomass and we can take ftr spectra and characterize the pellets on basis of certain frequencies which are characteristic of fungal cell wall components like beta glucans chitin and chitosan so that is also useful so all these data sets will be followed after we present the methods which we have used for obtaining the uh, the results under these objectives so in in one paragraph only i can sum up what is our you know finally the goal so this work was aimed at morphological characterization of permetomyces pellets from different species using a combination of stereo microscopic scanning electron microscopic and infrared spectroscopic techniques aided by state of the art 3d biometrological image analysis software now these bi biometrological parameters are standard software inbuilt parameters which are universally known to mathematicians and uh, uh, biologists as well and uh, they are very precise in their measurement because they are programmed so finally coming to our materials and methods these are the sources of culture in all we use 13 cultures and uh, the 13 cultures were obtained through standard tissue culture techniques from freshly harvested fruit bodies we got the culture they are all deposited in goa university fungus culture collection and this is their uh, identification and uh, they were maintained on the using the Uh, the universal acceptable technique of mart extract at 28 degrees celsius so purity was often checked and we have got a lot of experience in culture maintenance and uh, that has added to our uh, expertise then uh, this is a view of how we have obtained in the growth medium the standard pellets you can see uh, in the top row on the left side you can see thermitomyces globulus pellets then orandiacus pellets then uh, clypeatus Uh, one of the stream and then we see albuminosus on the bottom panel the last image then submerged growth conditions we have given here pellet to pellet inoculum preparation 1% inoculum we have used and harvesting was done under aseptic conditions and stereo microscopy studies were done then this is the simple technique in terms of uh, there is nothing new in this all that we have done is palladium coating of the sample so that we get get good sharp clear crisp images and these images were subjected to analysis using this uh, we have to contact these people and then get a permission to use this software 
and uh, that is how we have practiced and uh, we have self taught ourselves to use this software and it has given us a mine of information as you will see so these are the biometrological parameters which are dictated by the software and we have to feed the data and process the data and get the output of the data and subject it to further statistical analysis to get certain clues and these clues lead you to you know your you know the results uh, so factor analysis surface isotropy morphological printing and analyze the furrows and motifs all these are standard nomenclatures which are used in biometrological studies so first we can see the application of fourier transform this is also a standard technique on which i won't spend much of a time we have sample treatment sample was free of moisture spectra was recorded on one of the very good machine in chemistry department and we assigned the bands and then we subjected the bands to statistical package then these are the results first i will will present the results of two dimensional surface colonies of various strains of thermitomyces this is microcarpus as it is found in the field and that is the pure culture two dimensional culture of microcarpus these are specimens of albuminosus from which we obtained these strains which are shown the fully grown colonies these are striatus beautiful uh, striated uh, specimens from which we obtained the culture which is shown on the slide then orandiacus then hyme then another strain of hyme then globulus then clypeatus we obtained from clypeatus different strain 1 2 3 4 5 then stereomorphology so the pellets are very interesting forms and uh, you can see here microcarpus pellets we can see albuminosus pellets then albuminosus uh, you know the hyaline pellets then striatus pellets orantiacus pellets hyme pellets another strain of hyme then globulus pellets then clypeatus pellets one form and another strain of clypeatus till another strain of clypeatus another strain of clypeatus and so on so basically you can see the variation across the strains across the species when this forms were just now uh, shown to you then we digitize the boundaries because to bring out the heterogeneity now these are these are this is the heterogeneity that we can see you can see the margin and uh, this is where you know the this is very this is the this is the outer edge of the margin is very important when we magnify this and we try to study the factor dimension and isotropy and you know, all this this margin becomes very important that's why it has been shown in two dimension very soon we'll see the three dimensional view of these margins under stereo uh, the electron microscopy so these are you know in sequence we have shown that in the same sequence as you have seen the cultures in 2d we will show you the 3d uh, same biometrological analysis so topographic micro heterogeneity what we show as a result here is topographic micro heterogeneity features of pellets obtained from 13 strains belonging to seven species it difficult to reveal and quantify visually however because human eye has its own limits so we went to 2d same images then we subjected these 2d same images because again there we cannot actually pick out the feature as criss cross type a network of type a type of tunnels and all these are all very subjective terms so to remove the subjectivity and bring in precision and objectivity we depended on biometrology and biometrology allowed us to quantify the results which finally yielded a rich and quantitative data useful in fine morphological characterization so i am proceeding to that species by species and strain by strain and in each panel initially we will see a same image of the whole pellet and uh, then we proceed to the processed images this is a magnified view of the topography of the pellet you can see the intricacy of this and the intricacy is very well brought out by you know the features which you have shown the three dimensional rendering in the software where you can see the landscape as if you are flying like a bird over top of the pellet surface imagine just you know that giving a glance at the pellet surface and having a look at it and the uh, uh, video will be also shown as a representative example of how we can study the you know the features of the uh, pellet topography because these are the concept which are very much required in you know precision analysis of the pellet and the more precise we become you can see that it is it is, it is going to aid in strain selection so we can see now the isotropy here you know it is totally different this one it is it is a uh, Yeah, it, this this pattern is it changes with the strain and we have given the values we have tabulated it i will come to that slide later this is the motif you can see color coded motifs have been used and each is distinct each has different area uh, enclosed within it and this is the furrows view next we can see 
I represent the animated view. So uh, the purpose behind showing the animated view, as I said, that we can get a clear idea of as if we are flying over the pellet surface. And this is for the first time we are showing for termitomyces anywhere in the world. And uh, further we can see details of each and every strain. And I will not waste a lot of time on this because you can see the heterogeneity here. Previously you have seen heterogeneity is there. All are different. All are different. This strain is different. This is striatus. This is orantiacus. You can see the changing isotropy. It's not similar to previous species. By me, you can see the pellets forms are different. Then see the heterogeneity here. The isotropy also is different. Then you see the dense mycelial network, compact and dense structure here, revealed by 50 micrometer scale. So basically what I am showing is heterogeneity at micro level, means micro heterogeneity of different strains of pellet surfaces at highly magnified view and as it is analyzed by biometrological software. So finally we will get certain values, these are the values, so all the pictures we will get the values and these values are further interpreted using the graphs. So we can see the variation of fractal dimension here, low values, high values, very high values, they are not same for all strains. So there is a lot of heterogeneity in fractal dimension and that is helpful in deciding the types also. Then lot of variation in terms of furrows mean density, lot of variation you can see in pellet topography, lot of variation in terms of open motive, closed motive and total motive. And Finally, on basis of combination of stereo microscopy and uh, the same analysis, we generally get a four types. I mean, this is a simplistic view of way of looking at you know that typology means how many types of pellets you have. So this is the classification. One form is oblong compact, another is cerebroid. Then this is elongated flakes. This is spherical. This is aggregated. And uh, basically, all these species we can place under these four categories. Then this is the representation of what is the data which was shown in the previous table and from which we can see that some of the types they could go into uh, some of the species the strains can go into two types. Then this is more important because this is being done for the first time in termitomyces also and we have no idea whether it has been done in any other species of uh, macrofungi in the pelletized form. So we can see here the different types on basis of the biometrological parameters. So if you just take fractal dimension, two groups emerge and they are very important because even a small change in fractal dimension means a lot in complexity. This is the principle. So furrows also means it shows the type of landscape that, the, that, that, the, uh, that we are examining. So there are less than 10,000 and more than 10,000. Uh, more than 10,000, less than 10,000. We have two types there and isotropy percentage we have Altogether five types and all the 13 strings can be distributed in five types. Then total motives also that shows us the diversity of the features in the landscape and total six types are delineated or identified on basis of that. So this is very important in uh, coming closer to our any our concept of a modern, modern pellet. So FTR based characterization, this was our Next approach, because FTI is very precise, it can pick up the cell wall features, the biochemical features and these are standard FTI spectra which are obtained for different strains, different strains and uh, this is band analysis, totally 50 bands are picked up from FTI spectra of all the 13 strains and their assignment is here, 900, 1500, fighting cardiosan is very distinct, CS3 and CS2 stretching is distinct, 3004, so these bands were subjected to Based cluster analysis and cluster analysis has produced also some sort of spectral typology. So you can see here that this is one, this is one and this is one. So along with uh, the other data, this can be successfully used for determining the purity as well as the stability as well as the ultrastructural integrity of the strains and principal component analysis also put them because they are all termitomyces close to each other but there is still very important differences there. So finally, what is, the, what is the achievement? So here I stand before you to 
to claim that this is the first work on pelletization and pellet morphological studies on multiple strains. There are 54 species of termitomyces, but in the full global world culture collection, there may be only 12 or 14 strains, and we have one of the largest culture collection of termitomyces in in our university on which we are extensively working. So it allowed us to use these cultures very effectively and that's how these, these, these studies have come about. This work shows that topographic microfusions or pellets are useful markers of strain types. With judgment can be made about selection of strains for submerged cultures to obtain what we define as model pellet forms. So FTR diagnostic bands are useful as spectroscopic markers to ascertain chemical purity and ultra-structural stability of biochemical active cell walls. And biometrological image analysis could serve as an aid in quantification of topographic micro heterogeneity of pellets, meaning we can pick out minutest of the minute differences across the strains and use it as an intelligent indicator of you know the strains which will be useful to us in further work. So what this work has brought about is there is a lot of uh, interest in understanding pellet topography. For example, Zhang 2015 is many review has said that pellet topography is defined by actively growing surface or marginal IP has been implicated in absolute and high enzyme production. That means it is not the core of the pellet which produces some products. The action takes place at the interface of the pellet surface with the liquid which is which is which is shaken in the medium. So that means you need to look very carefully at the architecture of the pellet surface, and that is what we have done. Then the second is importance of reducing morphological heterogeneity. You cannot now, we have, we have seen now 13 different types of pellet forms. And we have also identified different different types, four types on basis of general classification and more than different different types under fractal, under, uh, under isotropy, under uh, motifs. We also see lot of variation if we use that yardstick. So basically there is lot of complex information which is associated with the pellet structure and that we have to actually take care of by intelligent you know that uh, use of parameters incubation condition nutritional conditions and all and which will lead us to finally our model form so next we can see the so far you know the models which are offered are they are saying that uh, there are aggregative and non aggregative there are two types of you know the uh, 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 you can see the submerged conditions but these typologies which they are, they are talking about are of no use because we have not used spores to start our pellets so our claim is that this work comes out a totally different paradigm. Our paradigm is that use SAM, use FTIR, use biometrological approach and you can come out with different typologies. And these typologies are totally different than the conventional typologies which are used for microfungi, sporulating fungi. So however we are in agreement. Although we may not agree that one size fits all principle, we are in agreement of observation of Zhang that more researchers focusing on fundamental applied research of fungal species, these challenges will be overcome and answers to the pellet formation mechanisms will be acquired in the nature field. What are the challenges? So we will see what are the challenges. The challenges remain regarding interpretation of pellet forming mechanism, limitation of research techniques, quantitative determination of driving force in special and complex condition and universal mechanism of pellet formation. Basically we have to look at the very, you know, the sequence of morphogenesis of pellets. And each and every you know step in that direction will be useful. So our future work would move in direction to answer some of these questions with final goal, if you ask me, being characterization of a modern termitomyces pellet form potentially useful in fungal bioproduct industry. Thank you very much.